What is up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Flippin' Soup. I hope you guys had a really good, rocking, successful day. Sorry about the vape smoke you're seeing rise up. Uh, new glasses. I can actually see the items I am listing now. I'm pumped and stoked about that. It's been over a year since I had glasses to be able to see, but I want to do something fun tonight. I want to show some people that's never reselled uh, maybe a day in your life, and you've been thinking about it. Maybe you've been watching some of my content. Maybe you've been watching other resellers' content on eBay, and you just don't know what might sell. You hear me saying that everybody's got probably a hundred to a thousand dollars laying in their house that can get them started. Every, because in the beginning, I thought I had to have all kinds of money, and I'm sure you probably think that you might need the same, right? The truth behind that is you do not. And I'm going to go ahead and show you at least 10 different items that you probably got laying around your house that can start your journey off on reselling. Now, we started out, guys, with actually a little bit of inventory from our first store, but our very first store failed. And uh, But when we started that, we basically started with the $20 bill and odds and ends around the house. We didn't have a lot to start with, and we built it to a six-figure company with uh, within two years. And the reason I say within two years is because the first year, uh, the business completely failed, right, due to COVID and uh, Christmas holiday was around. The packages were getting delivered to the post office, but they were sitting there. got me really bad reviews. And anyways, a couple months later, I tried digging myself out of the below seller's level. I couldn't do so, so I picked a niche in clothes and began there. And it's in the clothes that brought us to a six-figure uh, industry, guys. Now, when I'm talking about six figures, obviously, after taxes and uh the inventory product, we're not at six figures, okay? We're selling six figures of inventory a year now, but we, you know, it's more, more, you do the math, right? I don't know, your state will be different on the taxes and uh, the amount you're paying for your inventory. But what I want to do, anyways, and so that's where we built it to, guys. And no, I'm no eBay guru genius, right? I didn't know anything about eBay when I first got started. So you don't have to have all the knowledge in the world. All you got to do is start listing items, right? And you might ask, what is there to list? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you 10 different items I'm sure almost everybody's got laying around their house. One is a hat. No, it doesn't have to be a Quicksilver hat or even a Snapback hat, but Snapback hats do seem to sell well for us. Um, I think I picked this hat up. It, it, this wasn't actually laying around my house, but I grabbed some items that would be laying ar around most people's houses that you could just get your journey starting off with. Um, so any type of hats. Matter of fact, we got a cowboy hat uh, I had laying around uh a Stetson the Billy Kid hat that is starting off on auction at $87. There's already three bids on it, and there's still two days to go. So, you know, you would be very surprised on what has value that's sitting around your house that you've actually thought about for the past six months to take it out to the curb, but you just haven't got the ambition to get that far yet, right? Well, check yourself before you do that, and if you're thinking about reselling, some of those items and some of them I'm going to show you, I think you're going to be quite surprised actually have value. Okay, so number one hat, I would probably only charge $15 for this hat. Uh, why? Because it's in light new condition. Um, it's a snack bat. All right. Uh, it's no special brand. Like I said, it's a Quicksilver. It's better than a no brand, but it's not a $70 hat, right? So moving along, guys, I had found this through a, uh, a house cleanup, right? And I was about to pitch it. And all this is, we started selling a lot of this stuff in the beginning, guys. Coffee mugs, vases like this. And I think this is more of just a decor vase. I could be mistaking. It's from 1974, and it's stamped on the bottom, Arnell's 1974. So I'm assuming that it came from some flower shop or something. They custom crafted this. Um, but something like this can go uh, anywhere from 20 to all the way up to $100, guys, depending. So when you think you don't have things laying around your house that can make you some coin, you are wrongly mistaken. Thanks, Maya, for watching. I was just speaking with you. Now, moving on. Here's another item that you might think it could be at your grandma's house. Maybe your grandma's got a bunch of stuff or your grandparents got a bunch of stuff they don't want. This is from the 1980s. This is just the sweet shop. Uh, pure wholesale treats canister. You think nothing of it. You, you see it sitting in your garage for... Your whole entire life living there, you look it up, you realize it's worth $40 to $60, and bam, that's all you need to start your eBay journey, okay? 
Let's move along to some little more odds and ends. This, well, they're all odds and ends, but these are wigs. Believe it or not, wigs have a niche on eBay, and they have a pretty good sell-through rate. Um, these are Paula Young wigs. No, they do not belong to me. Um, again, we cleaned out a house, and some of these were in here, guys. And these are things where a lot of people would just pitch them, right? A lot of people would pitch this. Look it up on eBay. You'd be surprised. They sell for $20 to $30 in value. And it's just laying around your house. Why not, right? And I have a few of those. That's what I always, this was the funnest part. This was the funnest part when me and my fiance first got into reselling was actually looking around the house in the beginning and not realizing something was worth $80 sitting in the corner of your closet buried by boxes and stuff you have, whatever, you know, stuff you have put away in boxes that is worth its value to some people. You got, you guys got to realize there's, I, I want to say 164 active, uh, million buyers a day on ebay that's a pretty good chunk of people okay uh out of the 8 billion people we're getting pretty close to 8 billion people in the world 164 million okay so you have 164 million active buyers a day on ebay looking for certain items so you might think a wig is a stupid idea but 1 million people don't think a wig is a stupid idea one thing i have learned Big time on eBay, guys, is don't go with, like, if you're going to get into clothes, don't think it's just your style of clothes that sells. I sell clothes from the 1960s that, uh, honestly, if if I didn't do any research on them or look them up, I probably would have packaged them up and donated them, and they're selling for $20 to $40 a piece. So don't think it's just your style that is in trend and sells. There's all different kinds of trends across the world. And with the global shipping program, guys, on eBay, you can easily ship a nation or uh, internationally, right? I ship internationally. It's the easiest thing in the world. You package your item up. eBay takes uh, the shipping. I charge everybody shipping and they calculate it how much it's going to cost. What you do is you ship it to their warehouse in the United States. Then eBay gets it and they figure out all the customs and all that stuff for you and they deliver it for you. So it's like, Scot free for you. I mean, it, it, it barely ever costs me any more money to ship internationally than it does in the United States. So that's a big plus. You're really opening up your, um, your, your audience. You're really opening up your customer base when you start selling internationally. Now, I don't sell every single day internationally, but well, you know, once a week, twice a week, sometimes five times a week, I notice a package is going to be getting delivered to the warehouse of eBay, which means that that package is going to go out of the country. All right, moving along, guys. We got, uh, everybody's got a pair of these laying around in their closet that they no longer wear. No, they might not be Levi's. Maybe they are Levi's. But this just a plain, simple uh, pair of denim jeans. These are 524 skinny women's uh, Levi jeans. And you would be surprised. No, yeah, you're going to list one. It's probably going to take you a week or so to sell it. But if you list, list a thousand of those, you're going to sell a lot of them every day. Right. The more you get on eBay, guys, the more you're going to sell. So for you beginners thinking that you don't have anything laying around your house that can start making you value, sell these for 14 to 20 dollars all day long and I buy them for five. Right. So if you think that it's not out there or I get them for a dollar, whatever the price might be, here goes another item that you would think is nothing. I'll make up bag. OK, now. I haven't even listed this item yet. None of these items have I listed. I'm getting, I'm going to be listing them. Um, and you guys all know is my niche is close, but I have been adding other odds and ends and they have been selling pretty fast for me. So when I do uh, have extra items like that around, I do. I don't only sell clothes, but 98% of my inventory is clothes. Um, so this is another thing, probably almost every female or even male has laying around their house from whatever, maybe even an ex, maybe, I don't know. I'm not telling you to sell your ex's stuff, but if it's been two to three years, obviously she's not coming back for it. That is a very good start. A lot of people, I think it's funny that, uh, I sell the majority of women's clothes. You know, it's funny. I'm in the thrift stores. I, I get a kick out of it because the, some women will kind of, you know, they, they'll they'll chatter with me. They'll talk with me. You know, they'll they'll make light of it. But other women look offended almost because I think they know what I'm doing and they take offense to it. Um, so you see me in the thrift store and 90% of the time I'm in the female section. Why do you guys think that is? 
If you guys know the answer to that question, drop it in the comments below. Why do you think I'm in the female section in the clothing industry so much? I'm not even going to tell you the answer to that. I want to know your answer in the comment below. So, my my, if you're still watching, why don't you answer that question if you know? Why does your mom's fiancé sell the majority of women's clothes? Okay, so... Right here, a handbag. It's just a makeup bag, guys. It's got a little thing. This one's actually vintage. It's a Gans, so it's actually worth a little bit more money than your $2 one or whatever. But anyways, everybody's got something laying around their house that can get your reselling journey to start off. You don't need a grand. You don't need 500 bucks. You don't need $100. You don't even need 50 You don't even need 20 What you need to do is go around your closet, go out to your garage, go in your basement if you have one, go in your closets, and be serious. How many times have you moved those pair of pants out that you keep holding on to just because you don't want to take them to Goodwill or whatever and donate them and you know you're never going to wear them again? List them. That's your starting right there. If you got five pairs in there you're not wearing, list one pair of denim jeans a day for the next five days. And I can bet, I can bet you will eventually get a sale out of that within the first couple of weeks if you're listing one item a day. If you're listing one item a day, I can almost guarantee you will get a sale within the first couple of weeks. Now, I'm not telling you to go list a chewed up dog toy or something five days a week and then you're going to get a sale. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I could be wrong. Maybe there's a dog toy that's worth millions out there and I don't know about it, but I, I wouldn't suggest that. Something somebody could use. You know, use your use your head a little bit. But um, moving along, we sold a lot of these. Not all Spider-Man books or Marvel books, um, but these are something that people... Almost everybody has these in their house that has kids. Their kids grow up. They still got a bookshelf with their kids' books on it, whether you're going to keep them for memorabilia or whatnot. The majority of the time, they're actually collecting dust, and you're never going to touch them again. You're never going to use them again. So if you don't know where to get started, some of your kids' books have value to them. Comic books have value to them. Um, baseball cards are huge right now, baseball and basketball cards. I wish my – matter of fact, my brother, it's funny, he got into reselling as well. But he, I didn't even know he was doing it. All of a sudden, my mom's like, hey, have you got any cards laying around? I'm like, yeah, I did. I was listing them. She's like, uh, she, she just called me and asked me that. And I had, she, and it was funny that she told me that my brother was selling baseball cards and he was doing good at it, right? But he knows. He like, I, my brother Brad was the sport guy. Like, you could ask him who played for Michigan in 1997, uh, basketball, college, uh, football, hockey, and everything. And he and he would name the whole roster and what their stats were. Like, he was that good, and he paid that much attention. So he knows what cards are of value. I do not, right? I, I don't know. You know, of course, if it was a Michael Jordan or a Babe Ruth or something like that, I would have a little bit of knowledge just knowing that it's a rare card, and I would know it would be worth some value and list it. But I, I, I don't know enough about cards to go spend $100 on somebody's collection or $1,000 on somebody's collection and begin to resell cards. And, and, and it kind of scares me to ship them if you don't have the proper sleeves because if they get damaged on the way, then you're SOL. You're going to be refunding them. So, yeah, just books, common books. There's a guy I watched. I started watching guys a couple years back on YouTube, and it's going to drive me nuts because I forgot his name. Uh, maybe Razzie Resale, maybe that's what it is. Uh, he started on Amazon, guys, or maybe it was eBay. I think it was Amazon, and he, he does $100,000 a year. Actually, at one time, I think it was like $375,000 in sales in a year. And he was selling nothing but books. He would go to the thrift store, scan the books, see which ones are worth money. And that's what Nietzsche picked. And his mom even retired early. And began to do it, and she was making sixty thousand dollars a year reselling books that she's finding at the thrift stores. Guys, if that's not exciting, I don't, I don't know. Like, if if that's not a little bit exciting to you, that you know that nowadays you can be your own boss. You don't need to go punch into a time clock. And I'm not taking anything away from anybody that does do that. You know, uh, not everybody is an entrepreneur. Not everybody can be self-disciplined. As a matter of fact, I struggled with self-discipline very bad in the beginning. And I am still got to beat it into my head that this amount of items got to get done every day, right? Uh, you know, work hard, play later. I always got to tell myself that because I'm a young kid at heart. And I always want to, you know, whatever. I, matter of fact, I just recently changed it from thrifting in the morning to now going to be thrifting at night and I'm going to be listing from four o'clock in the morning till, you know, two to three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I did that today. And before my fiance got out of work, I was completely done. I had more time with my fiance. Super rad. So 
Moving right along, guys, more items that you might not think would sell that is sitting in your basement, sitting in your closet, sitting in your shelf, sitting in your dresser, sitting in your garage, sitting in your crawl space, whatever. Here's one that might blow some of your guys' mind that's worth between $40 to $80. Uh, matter of fact, I was getting ready just recently to take it to the curb, and then I decided, hey, you know, I should look this up. And what it is, it's a 1976 Stroh's Bohemian Style Beer Box. Okay, nothing special. Yes, it is very thick uh, cardboard. It's got the flap lids and things like that. Um, I honestly was literally ready to take this out to the trash, looked it up, and I seen one sold for $48. Um, so I'll be listing this uh, tonight as like a bonus. Um, that's what I'm going to start doing myself at nighttime is I'm going to be listing bonus items after I get my inventory done from the morning time, you know, till the afternoon, like I was just speaking on. And then at nighttime, I'm just going to do some bonus odds and ends that I got laying around the house to make a little extra money. So some of you resellers going into 2022 have been reselling for a little while and you got an inventory system down and you even got a niche and you're selling a, maybe you're selling nothing but coffee cups and you got an AM shift, right? So you decide to list your items in the AM and you start out, say, at eight o'clock in the morning and you're done by noon, whatever, eight, or eight to three, whatever, whatever you decide, eight to, eight to 10 in the morning. I don't, I don't know. Some people only work four hours a day. Some people work two. Some people work, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, but whatever that is. Everybody else has got, you You got other things laying around that you could also list as bonus. So I'm kind of doing like a split shift. Uh, it works for me because one, I'm a busybody. I, I, I can't lay in the bed too long and watch TV. That don't work for me. Uh, I get antsy and I get to moving around. So anyways, that's what I'm going to be doing. It, that's something that you guys could add and make it a little bit. That could increase uh, your revenue this year by just adding a couple extra items per evening of an odds and ends items that you know has some value, but usually you wouldn't list. Like this Stroh's box. Guys, I, I resell clothes. I don't resell beer boxes, right? But I'm going to be listing it because I have value. Uh, moving along, we have a pair of Yeezys. No, these are not in the greatest shape. Um, but it doesn't matter. I can get this yellow out of here uh, with the Magic Eraser. The Mr. Clean Magic Erasers are amazing, guys, on the soles of shoes. Uh, these have a pretty good insole. They're not perfect, but these will still sell for $20, $25, guys, as soon as I get them cleaned up. That is another thing a lot of people have, and they take them, they think that they're worn out, and they throw them right in the garbage can, and they take them to the Goodwill. That's extra $25 you can put in your pocket, right? So, last but not least, this is something I used to sell a lot of, and I still have some of it. Um, and these sell for more money than just your plain DVD players. Obviously, it's a VHS DVD player. This one is an Insignia. And this one goes for about $40, but I've had them go all the way up to, you know, $180 and $200. They really like the ones that sell that sold well for me was the VHS DVD combos that you could uh, record. You know, you could record on them. You could record with the VHS. I don't know so much about the DVD, but I know you could with the VHS. So um, that's at least 10 things, guys, I just gave you that could be laying around your house. I know some of them are definitely laying around your house, a pair of pants, you know, that maybe you bought and you thought would fit you, or at one time they did fit you, and they no longer fit you, right? Um, canisters sell, guys. Just a quick recap. Um, books. Books are another seller. There are so many things laying around in your house that is not getting used. Uh, maybe somebody in your family was a pack rat at one time and they want to get rid of everything. Oh my God, that's a gold mine for you. That is a gold mine and a lot of inventory for you to get started listing. Well, I hope this video was beneficial to some of you guys. If so, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, drop a comment below if you know, once again, why I sell the majority of women's clothes. It's your boy, Flippin' Soup. You guys have a rockin' evening.